Hi everyone. As promised, um, I said I would mention something I picked up recently from eBay and it arrived yesterday and I thought, well, I'll put it up today, which is Tuesday. Um, yeah, I don't know what I've got. It's obviously a 500 type telephone, or bits of a 500 type telephone. Got a nice case there, uh, Bell telephone system, uh, Western Electric, and matching it is obviously the handset. It's exactly the same. The dial was not even connected, but I knew all this, so you know, I, as I say, um, I knew the state of the innards and that but what interested me was this I've never ever seen an innards of a 500 type telephone quite like this I was hoping to work out where all the connections went to but unfortunately it's too damaged to do any further the uh, the capacitors got one of its legs broken uh, you've got a variable potentiometer what that is lowering and making louder I don't know whether it's referring to the handset now the handset was also tied in there um, it was not connected uh, this is the actual end of the handset so where would you join those spade type connectors anywhere on this printed board so it looks to me like a complete mess or a marriage if you like you've got your operating switch at the back and that goes down to us to um, mark HS does that mean handset your incoming leads are there which is held on by a little plastic clip the cable they've used is not litz wire uh, litz wire is that horrible tinsel type wire uh, this is actually um, it's screened it's got a screen around it red and black and normal normal conductors Anyway, that was on that. Um, the cradle switch, as I say, very crude. It's got a, at the back, it's got a micro switch, which is wired in. A crude spring to, presumably to return the cradle, which it does. There's no problem there. You've got various chips in, in this um, printed circuit board. You've got um, a little detector there, which I think is used so that it doesn't matter which way round the A and B lines or the tip and ring, whatever you like, it connects either way round. And I think that might do any correction. Um, There's various transistors, capacitors, resistors, the lot. It looks quite an interesting circuit. I would like to know if anyone else out there knows exactly what uh, this circuit was used for. There's no indication of how uh, signalling's done. There's obviously no bell. There's no network as we know. Um, can't see any tone devices set up anywhere. It is, as I say, a complete mystery. But I did get it because it, it looked interesting and I tend to collect unusual things. Often very unusual things. 
And we've got a picture also in there was the dial, which is dated 870. Um, no name on the dial, which is rather unusual. I thought it would have had a name Western Electric or something like that, but it hasn't. It's a typical Western Electric type dial. I won't take the cover off again. But the, um, the contacts seem to be okay and it seems fully working. Just one problem, it just needs an extra wire uh, connected up. It's, it's gone missing, but that is not a problem. It's showing three leads coming out and there's four there. So that bluey slate coloured one has been cut short, but that can always be extended. So there's no problem there. All your screws are there. Uh, the dial works perfectly. It's what I would say a fairly modern type dial. You've got your little hole there. Which you put a pin down or something down there to release the actual wheel. The, um, the, uh, the finger wheel that can be then taken off. And any labels are placed in, in there, making sure you've got them round the right way. And then in a sort of a backward twist, you click it back in. I don't even see this underneath there. Yeah, if you look underneath there, I can't even see it. Oh, there we are, in the back there. A little area where... the dial the uh, finger plate drops into and a little clip comes in there to locks it in so there's your dial there's nothing wrong with the dial looks perfect perfectly okay just curious with it oh also by the way and this was their selling point um not that i particularly wanted one of these but all right they add to the the collection um this is a device where I've seen this used in America when I was out there, oh, many years ago. It's called a Restaphone. Restaphone. Made in Portland, Oregon, I think that is. So it's American made. On the other side, it's got more writing of patent numbers. Made in USA, so it's genuine American, and a clip that clips on to the handset, and it's such a way that I've seen these used. They look uncomfortable, but um, they've obviously used them in America, and that is is a, a shoulder rest, a rest on, on your shoulder. Okay, all this stuff needs a blooming good clean. I haven't done this. It, it is. As it's arrived off of eBay, I say the handset is just a standard 500 type handset. Uh, nothing out of place there. There's your underside of the cover. It dated. Turn it around the right way. The little ring there, got the dating on there. Can't always show these things, but there is a date in there. I think it might come up. Looks like 79. Or rather 76. I can't even read my own blinking thing. There we are. 76 clear colour plungers well that is more or less it it will obviously oh I just mentioned the the underside of the base there's the base it is very reminiscent 
of a normal 500 telephone. You've got your vent holes there for the two gongs if it had a bell installed. You've got your loud control there, I know it's upside down. But this, this one has been replaced uh, by that pop meter. You've also got a sign there saying QC Past, or that Q, yeah, Quality Control Past, which you don't normally see on an American phone. And also, a big clue is what's written there. Made in Taiwan, Republic of China. So I think that is something we wouldn't normally see on a genuine made American phone. I may be wrong and I'm obviously open to any comments. That plate at the back I think is just solely there to give it a bit of weight. So when you're dialing it's not going to skate across the surface. You've also got a number up there. I don't know what that, what that refers to. But that's the number that's on the, the base or the chassis. I think that's more or less all I've got to say about this. It's one which will will end up in the spares box and um, it was interesting I'm, I'm learning a bit all the time so yeah if anyone's got an idea what it is what it was used for I'm assuming it was just a normal phone was it a tone calling a, a, a tone one as opposed to a ringer but where is, is the generator that gives out the tones? Lots of questions I could ask, but I don't get any answers. Anyhow, thanks again for watching. The next uh, phones I'll put up will be an appreciation of the, um, the little bedside phone, the Princess. But more about that when I put it up. So once again, thanks for watching. Thank you.